All right. Uh, good day, class members. So we will be discussing the parotid region. Now, um, from this diagram that you're seeing on the board, and I hope it is clear enough, you will see the skull, the lateral V of the skull, where the zygomatic arch is made visible. And you would also notice the external auditory meatus, the opening into the middle ear, into the deep ear. And then you would notice the lower jaw, which is the mandible. And the, the parotid region is located posterior lateral to the skull or the face. Now we want to outline the region, the boundaries of this region, which is very important in anatomy. The boundaries of this region are it is bounded superiorly, you can see the red line I have just drawn, inferior to the zygomatic arch, you can see that. So that is the superior boundary of the parotid gland. The posterior boundary is the external acoustic meatus opening, which is drawn by a red line, and also the sternocleidomastoid muscle which I have represented with these lines. So the sternocleidomastoid muscle forms the posterior boundary as well as, well as the external acoustic meatus. The anterior boundary is formed by the masseter muscle. Now the masseter muscle is one of the muscles of mastication that is located right here. This is the position of the masseter muscle. Now this is the boundary of the, um, this is the location of the masseter muscle. The masseter muscle is attached, it's a quadric muscle that is attached to the inferior margin of the maxillary process of the zygomatic arch. And of course that's the proximal attachment, the distal attachment is to the, man, the angle of the mandible. The inferior board boundary of the parotid region is the angle of the mandible and of course the medial boundary the medial boundary is the body of the of the mandible which is a ramus and the lateral boundary is the skin that is surrounding that region so we can we can beautifully outline this region to be here so this is what we're talking about superior margin posterior margin inferior margin and of course the anterior margin the medial margin is the body or the ramus of the mandible and the superficial covering which is the lateral boundary is the skin that covers and the and um the subcutaneous tissue so we would have our gland right there that is the parotid region. Now there are structures that are found in the parotid region. What are the structures or content of the parotid region? So we say content. Content of the parotid region. Content of the parotid region. Right? Number one content of the parotid region of course it's the parotid gland so the parotid gland is the major occupant of the parotid region so that's a very important point to note the parotid gland is the major content so parotid gland parotid gland and of course its ducts the parotid gland and its ducts number two content is the plexus that you find there, which is the parotid plexus. The parotid plexus is derived from facial nerve. The parotid is derived from facial nerve CNV11. Okay. Number three content of this region is a vein. 
and that's the retromandibular vein. Now the retromandibular vein is formed. You all remember that you have a superficial temporal vein, that's a superficial temporal vein, descending downward, all right? And as soon as it meets the, there's a vein here that joins with the superficial temporal vein, that is the maxillary vein, it becomes the retromandible vein that runs within the substance of the, um, of the parotid gland. So this becomes the retromandible vein. Now, of course, we know that the retromandible vein will divide further up and then we have an anterior division or posterior division that joins with the posterior auricular vein to form the external parotid, the external parotid vein. So the retromandible vein is number three content of the, um, the parotid region. Number four content, number four content is the external, the external carotid artery. Number five is a masseter. The masseter muscle. These are the contents of the of the region. Now we take the gland itself. Let's let's look at the let's look at the gland. The parotid gland is um, is one of the largest um, salivary glands. We have the submandibular gland that is discussed when we talk when we look at the submandibular triangle of the neck. We also have the sublingual gland that will be discussed when the oral cavity is dissected. However, the parotid gland being the largest gland, um, salivary gland, um, has an important duct because it's an exocrine, um, it's an exocrine gland, secretes um, its contents into the external environment. Now the duct itself, the arrangement of the duct or the anatomical drive of the duct is such that it emerges from the, the um, let's say this is a duct. This is the gland itself. The gland is an irregularly shaped structure, right? And this is the duct, right? So that's the duct. Now this duct emerges from the anterior margin of the parotid gland and runs um, at the anterior border. It runs at the anterior border of the masseter and drives its way medially. It drives its way medially and then enters the oral cavity at the second it enters the oral cavity at the second maxillary molar tooth. It drives into the oral cavity at the second maxillary molar tooth. So I'm going to take that again. Uh, the duct emerges from the anterior margin of the gland and runs medially at running at the anterior border of the masseter where it pierces importantly that's a point that you need to note it pierces the uh, boxinator muscle it pierces the boxinator muscle it pierces the boxinator mus muscle and enters the oral cavity at the opposite the second maxillary molotude. Now, the innovation of this gland, the innovation of the gland, there are two things we need to take into consideration. Is the, the parotid gland is covered by a tough fascia sheet. There's a tough fascia sheet that covers this gland and this fascia is derived from the deep layer 
or the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Remember that the that is that fascia is what covers the the neck. So it is derived from the investing layer of deep cervical fascia, and it is the fascia. It's the the, the shape is innovated by sensory. It is innovated by sensory nerve that is derived from two nerves. The first is the auriculotemporal nerve. Auricular. The auriculotemporal nerve. And two is the greater the greater auricular nerve. I want you all to note this. The, the, the sensory innovation of the the parotid sheet is innovated by the auriculotemporal nerve and the greater auricular nerve. The auriculotemporal nerve is a branch of the mandibular nerve. Is a branch of the mandibular nerve. And remember that the mandibular nerve is one of the divisions of the trigeminal nerve, right? And the greater auricular nerve is a branch of the cervical plexus, basically C2, C3. So they convey sensory modality from the nerve, from the gland itself, to the central nervous system, in terms of pain, in terms of irritation, and things like that. Now, autonomic innovation of this gland is both parasympathetic and sympathetic. Parasympathetic innovation of this gland is um, through the glossopharyngeal nerve. Now, we can bring out a very important diagram here that could help us understand the innovation of this gland autonomically. Say we have this, we're cutting this area out and enlarging that area. So that is your mastoid bone and the mastoid bone has so we chiseled out the mastoid bone we chop off the mastoid bone and expose the mastoid bone so when we expose the mastoid bone we see there's a tympanic cavity somewhere there and the tympanic cavity extends all the way to an opening into the oral cavity or the pharynx so that is the pharyngo tympanic tube that's the pharyngo tympanic tube now we have nerves there, right here you have a plexus of nerve, there's a plexus of nerve right here, there's a plexus of nerve and this cavity here is a tympanic cavity, right? And then you have other nerves that are joined to this, to a ganglion here called the otic ganglion, that's the otic ganglion, and then we have also a nerve that extend from the glossopharyngeal nerve that's the glossopharyngeal nerve okay now this nerve carries secretal it carries presynaptic parasympathetic secretal motor fiber passing through the tympanic plexus and pass through the lesser petrosal nerve to reach the aortic ganglion. Now the aortic ganglion will then convey postsynaptic, so this is a postsynaptic, is a postsynaptic parasympathetic secretomotor fiber all the way into the gland itself, which is the parotid gland. Now this is a parotid gland. It's an irregularly shaped structure and that's the duct. Okay, so let me take this again. Here is a glossopharyngeal nerve, which is cranial nerve number nine. And this is a tympanic nerve. That's our tympanic nerve. And this region here is the, that is your mastoid bone. Or the mastoid process so we just broke up 
the mastoid process and expose the mastoid bone and then we see that the mastoid bone right here is a tympanic that's our tympanic that's the tympanic uh, cavity the tympanic cavity has its uh, in itself it has a tympanic plexus and the tympanic plexus will give nerve this is the lesser petrosal nerve that's the lesser petrosal nerve now let's take this again the parasympathetic innovation of the of the parotid gland is through the glossopharyngeal nerve so fibers are conveyed presynaptic parasympathetic secretomotor fibers are conveyed from this nerve passing through the tympanic nerve going through the tympanic plexus and then the petrosal nerve to reach the aortic ganglion this is the aortic ganglion all right that's the aortic ganglion all right to reach the aortic ganglion now we then have synapses we have a postsynaptic a postsynaptic parasympathetic secretomotor fiber that is conveyed by the auriculotemporal nerve so this nerve here is the auriculotemporal nerve so the auriculotemporal nerve does two things here auriculotemporal nerve so the auriculotemporal nerve conveys um, parasympathetic postsynaptic secretomotor fiber to the nerve as similarly sensory modalities is conveyed from this from the from the gland itself via the auriculotemporal nerve to reach the central nervous system as well as the great greater petro the, the greater auricular nerve which is a branch of the cervical plexus all right now how about sympathetic nerve innovation the sympathetic innovation of this gland is via the cervical ganglion passing through the external carotid plexus to reach this gland. Both of them have secretomotor, they have the secret, secret, the secretomotor activity. So both parasympathetic, parasympathetic and sympathetic will cause secretion of saliva gland. We cause secretion of sal saliva. Alright? Both of them will cause secretion of saliva. Now I hope this helps you to understand the basic understanding of the parotid region as well as the, um, uh, the parotid gland, content of the parotid region, innovation of the parotid gland. Thank you very much.